morning, everyone. Since its inception, the COVID-19 pandemic has spread into virtually all nations of the planet, resulting in closing of schools, companies, and social existence. It created global panic, overwhelmed hospitals, and closed borders. Such pandemics generally are not only public health concerns, they rather trigger social and economic disasters in the affected countries. The likely impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the global economy comes in three phases. Initial supply and demand shock, supply restriction because of lack of labor and closing workplaces, and demand shock due to consumer fear. Then the containment stage. Government mandated restrictions that mostly further reduce demand by restricting travel and closing businesses and public spaces. Then the recessionary pressure, further demand, reduction due to loss of jobs, income, and spending power. So looking at the economic impact, the global economy has been seriously demobilized by COVID-19. And to be able to limit the transmission of this disease in the community, a number of the affected countries have opted to experience complete lockdown. Major international flights and all types of business transports have been deferred. Where lockdowns have been implemented, Railroad services, buses, trucks, and vehicle transports have been suspended with special exemption to those associated with essential commodities. In almost all countries, hall sports, industrial, educational, and spiritual institutions were also shut. Industries have been suffering a lot, as many of them expected those related to amenities that are essential are shut for a long time in several countries. People belonging to both the transportation and tourism industry have also been facing extreme difficulties. Production levels have gone very low. Economies are currently facing the threat of inflation and increasing unemployment. It will affect the GDP of every country from the economics. At some point, everyone started asking, when will our social and economic activities be reinstated? What the different stages of reopening will mean? And how will it affect my business, my family, and my community? What we've seen so far is that the phases of reopening are specific to each city in each country, depending on the level of readiness. Phase one, usually the minimal reopening, all high-risk individuals should still be shelter in place, working from home. Visits to senior care are not recommended and strict social distancing are still enforced in many countries. Gatherings limited to a handful number of people. The next stage is reopening with social distances. This is where cities relax the rules of staying at home. In this phase, most businesses could start to operate again with very strict physical distancing protocols. Then lastly, resuming to normal. If there is no evidence of a rebound for the third time, vulnerable individuals could resume public interactions and businesses could restore to a normal level of staffing. The big question that most, if not all businesses have is how long will each stage last before economic activities get back to normal? Should they start transforming their business to adapt to the new norm or wait? One would ask, how can my business have access to IT solutions that can enable me to continue working remotely and be able to deliver my services remotely? How can I lower my IT costs while I still operate efficiently? Well, I'll touch on that a bit later. But now, let me share with you what I believe the post-pandemic life could look like. What is the new norm that we can expect? Well, there's definitely no one answer to that question, but some of the clear changes that we can foresee include massive disruption to globalization, social distancing, inevitable recession, if not depression, and the possibility to abandon setting GDP target. More uncertainties include opening of the borders, economy recovery, or even other virus outbreaks. These uncertainties have huge impact on how different industry verticals are and will direct their IT strategies to a more affordable, powerful, easy to use platforms that will help grow their operations in a stable, secure environment. For some organizations, short survival is the only agenda item. Others are uncertain, thinking about how to position themselves once the crisis have passed and things go back to normal. The question is, what will the normal look like? While no one can say how long the crisis will last, what we know is the new norm will not be the same as today. 
The new normal will affect our work, our personal lives and our businesses. We have to get used to working from home, but we must have the right collaboration tools to communicate and solutions for our businesses to manage the IT systems and infrastructure. Those businesses who have, for example, physical backup solution today, realize that they struggle to have access to their backup tapes when needed during a lockdown. They will eventually move to cloud services to enable them to have a complete business continuity plan that can be managed and operated remotely. E-learning platforms will be adopted broadly across the education sector. This can only be achieved with adequate e-learning solutions that can provide the features required to meet the education institution's requirements while taking into consideration live streaming that supports video compression and can be delivered on low bandwidth. Not to mention these e-learning platforms have to be flexible, scalable, and cost-effective. Big brands and SMEs have all been facing different challenges. And to overcome those challenges, resilience is a vital necessity. Near-term issues of cash management is clearly paramount. But soon afterwards, businesses will need to act on broader resilience plans as the shock begins to upturn established industry structures, resetting competitive positions forever. Much of the enterprises will experience uncertainty and financial stress. Public, private and social sector leaders will need to make difficult decisions that balance economic and social sustainability. Some of the challenges we already see in mobile services are people staying at home will mean usage shifts more from mobile to Wi-Fi. We're seeing increased use of social media to spread disinformation in social platforms. Very negative impact on advertising, brands reduce overall advertising budgets, cancelled events and travel restrictions impact advertising revenues, for example. Concerts also impacted negatively as we see inevitable increase in streaming consumption. Music events of all sizes are being cancelled. Impact in sports cancellation as well of major physical championship events. Where there are challenges, there are also opportunities. Increased consumption of digital content from mobile apps to TV and gaming can mean as much as 50% increase in traffic. Accelerate the development of technologies that help the fight against the virus. For example, artificial intelligence and smart home healthcare services should benefit in the long term. Many countries and hospitals are now using COVID-19 diagnosis solutions using artificial intelligence. App publishers should beef up their in-app offerings to satisfy increased user engagement. Social platforms need to get a grip on what content is being shared about COVID-19 on their platforms. Preparations for the new norm related to the telcos. Telcos should prepare their networks for increased remote working and homeschooling. Adopt cloud technology to support virtual reality, augmented reality streaming, video conferencing, e-learning, e-health, and many other industry scenarios that will be delivered remotely. For the OTT service providers, communications apps will allow people to keep in touch with their family, friends, and colleagues. So they must be ready to scale up their messaging, voice, video calling, and content sharing capacity. Online video platforms should take the opportunity to market their services by promoting exclusive content or original film to encourage subscribers uptake for online video platforms. In e-commerce, online service providers and commerce players should look at how this change in consumer buying behavior can be harnessed beyond the pandemic. Analytics and predictive modeling based on machine learning can help scenario planning and responses. Augmented reality can be used to enhance online shopping, for example, trying clothes on or virtual showrooms. Conversational commerce, such as chatbots, voice and video, can all be used as sales and support tools to provide interactivity and ultimately to help sustain relationships. An increased focus and new investment in smart home and digital media applications. Vendors should be ready to meet this new demand. Communications vendors should focus on providing platforms and services that connect, inform, and entertain people. These platforms and services could include video calling and conferencing, emergency broadcasts, public service broadcasts, or content sharing. Service providers of all kinds, and commerce players in particular, need technology solutions and tools that can help their business and customers. 
Key solutions will include tools to better manage strained logistics and deliveries, flexible payment solutions, enhanced security tools, and technologies that enhance the shopping experience. To summarize the opportunities in the market during the post-pandemic, increased home working and consumer video conferencing accelerated push toward smart health, greater demand than ever for digital content, upsurge in mobile app downloads and consumption demand for entertainment, home working, delivery apps, mixed impact for ride sharing and COVID-19 info apps, collaboration apps, increased use of app-based video calling and conferencing, authorities need to provide reliable and timely communications. Digital commerce, online shopping and payments will surge. Not all merchants will benefit and logistics and fulfillment will be strained. There will be a rise in in-person payments via contactless cards and mobile applications. Artificial intelligence is playing a vital role in the detect and contain medical response to COVID-19. AI will support and entertain people at home. Smart homes, growing focus on home improvement and hygiene. Home healthcare will intensify. Voice control will help users to even avoid touching services and objects. In order to address the challenges or benefits mentioned earlier, enterprises are now demanding more enterprise intelligence services, such as containers, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, bots, and much more. These services are required to be hosted locally to address security and data sovereignty concerns. Large enterprises have learned to embrace multi-cloud strategies, leverage services from across multiple cloud providers, Others are taking a hybrid approach, combining the use of both public and private clouds. Most believe COVID-19 will increase their cloud usage. As I mentioned earlier, almost all countries have implemented stay-at-home policies for consumers, work-from-home policies for employees, and shutdowns of non-essential businesses. This resulted in massive economic impacts as a result of the pandemic. Cloud demand will undoubtedly shift as a result of these events. For those already adopting cloud services, we see increase in cloud consumption as a result of the extra capacity needed for current cloud-based applications to meet increased demand, as demand for remote work and online services continue to grow. Other organizations may accelerate migration from data centers to cloud in response to reduced headcount, difficulties in accessing data center facilities, and delays in hardware supply chains. The example I mentioned earlier around business continuity proved to many enterprises that public cloud providers offer a more reliable option for business continuity. In the post-pandemic era, organizations will and are already open to moving more sensitive data to the cloud. It is a journey ranging from keeping corporate financial data on-premise to moving IoT and non-sensitive data for analysis to cloud or even using SaaS models. Cloud readiness assessments and application dependencies are top migration to cloud challenges. But by choosing the right cloud partner who has the skills, experience, and tools to assist with the migration, this challenge can be overcome. Cloud providers must transparently advise on both technical and commercial feasibility of moving each and every service to the cloud. Also to advise on the best cloud model and the migration approach. The right cloud partner is the one that has experience, can deliver what they promise, and advise on optimizing spend, which is the top challenge, especially for large organizations. The success of cloud services is measured in cost savings, delivery speed, and the value add that the cloud provider can offer. Cloud provider pricing structures are complex and tricky to understand sometimes. However, taking a close look at provider discounts could uncover opportunities to reduce costs. For example, network costs in cloud services can be described sometimes as hidden costs if not explained or understood in advance. What we already see now is the dependence on cloud technologies to deliver services remotely across almost every industry vertical. Moving to cloud was a question of when, not if. Now the decision to adopt cloud services is moving at a much faster pace. In fact, we've seen multiple enterprises taking advantage for the lockdown to accelerate their journey to the cloud, 
or even do upgrades and migrations that was not possible or extremely risky during normal operations. The adoption of public cloud continues to grow dramatically across every industry vertical, and the COVID-19 outbreak will drive cloud consumption even higher. As a result of continually increasing IT spend, utilizing cloud services to drive cost savings continues to be the top cloud initiative for most of the organizations. Enterprises will leverage automated policies and technologies to continually improve on their service delivery in the post-pandemic era. Huawei Cloud now combines 30 plus years of accumulated technology, innovation, and expertise in the ICT infrastructure field to offer customers everything as a service. Through our fast growing local and global cloud data centers, our clients globally are using our affordable, powerful, easy to use platform to grow their enterprise in a stable, secure, ever improving environment with inclusive artificial intelligence. In Africa, we've already launched solutions that cater for the current pandemic for different scenarios, all which are hosted in our local data centers, supported by our local experts and global support. And just to name a few of those solutions, a full stack SAP certified platform for SAP B1 and S4 HANA workloads, the different scenarios that it's used for, entire SAP system on cloud, which allows customers to run the entire development, test, and production systems on the public cloud to make full use of public resources. SAP on Huawei clouds also used for dev and test scenarios. Also, on and off cloud collaboration, on-demand use, auto-scaling, easy and fast to use, implementing disaster recovery from the customer's data center to the public cloud for SAP. A cost-effective 3CX video conferencing solution for small to large enterprises which runs on low bandwidth and multiple devices with unbeatable experience, offering video conferencing, website, live chat and talk, unlimited users, free for unlimited extensions. A solution that is out-of-the-box service deployed on cloud and available in minutes with a unified management platform across multiple devices including PCs and mobile devices. Unbeatable price, you can save up to 80% of your costs per year. And full functionality for voice over IP, CRM integration, as well as record and storage. A world-class e-learning platform for the education sector. Cutting edge AI and education based on our proprietary learning management platform solutions for educational and training institutes, vertical industry associations, corporations, and publishers. E-commerce platform for all sizes of organizations that is designed and customized as per the specific requirements. COVID-19, artificial intelligent assisted diagnosis solution powered by Huawei Cloud, which has trained data sets with imaging of 4,000 plus images segmentation of pneumonia contour, DICE score of 85 plus, as well as an accuracy rate of 96%, reducing the false positive results of COVID-19 tests. With over 500 plus institutions and 2 million students used the solution, and over 100 corporations across six vertical industries and over 10 million learners, over 20 international publishers, and a long list of solutions designed for every industry vertical, among other enterprise intelligence services such as containers, big data analytics, voice and face recognition, OCR, among others. All our solutions have been tested and implemented across the globe, so there's no room for trial and error. Whether you are at the beginning of your journey to the cloud or already adopting cloud services, get in touch with us today and my team and I would love to discuss with you how our cloud and AI solutions across every industry vertical could benefit your business, not only on the short term, but also to be prepared for the post-pandemic era. Thank you for listening and stay safe.